here's the question. Do you want to go out the busted up, broke ass, bankrupt dude? Hell no. When people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, when I was little, I used to tell them a trophy wife. <laughs> The first man that I met, I was getting my rent paid. First man, first man, first man, first, first man, date. First date. Yeah. You're actually the first person I've met, so I'm a little nervous. What you guys are doing is just about the antithesis of what has been modeled to you. I'm worried that you could do something that you then later regret. I know what they're looking for is sex. Better to just get that money, get the hell out. If you're smart enough, then you don't go on the date in the first place. Like, I'm better than a lot of this, or we are. I know my family's in it, my relationship's in it, my boundaries are in it. Ask me something. Excuse me, ma'am, when were you born? Um, July 11th. <laughs> and what's happening tomorrow, ma'am? I'm having my first Holy Communion, that's what. I grew up real Catholic. I went to church on Sundays, said my prayers every night next to my bed. It just didn't stick. I've always dated men and women, and there's no place for an opinionated queer woman in the Catholic Church. My parents can't relate to me, but I know they love me. My sisters and I are like a lot of 20-somethings. We work more than one job and barely make ends meet. I wait tables, I temp in an office, but I'm still carrying debt. A lot of our friends make money as sugar babies, covering their expenses and rent. And they say it's easy. Becoming a sugar baby has never seemed more enticing. I'm in a relationship with Jocelyn. She's really wonderful, she's very supportive. And I kind of, I want to clear my debt before I start building a future with her. And I think a sugar daddy could make that happen for me. Jocelyn is okay with me going out with these guys, but we've set some clear boundaries. There can't be anything sexual. I'm feeling kind of stuck in my life right now. You know, living at home, it feels like I'm always in purgatory. And I would really love to move. I just quit a job at a cafe. I was working there for three years. I started working at a clothing store. If I can find a sugar baby relationship, maybe this could be a nice shortcut. I don't know, money just disappears. I go to school in Montreal and I live there right now. I don't speak French, so I can't really work. So I am very poor. Need to pay some rent. My dream goal would be to get all my friends flown to Mexico for my birthday, but I know my head's a bit in the clouds on that. <laughs> but I mean, I would settle for just finishing school without debt and maybe having a bit of cash. We've signed up on a popular sugar dating site that promises free vacations, paid tuitions, and cash allowances. And we're immediately getting tons of messages from sugar daddies. I'm able to live the lifestyle I want without slaving for it. After talking with a few sugar daddies online, I've locked down my first date looking to spend some quality time with someone based in mutual attraction and benefit. I wasn't nervous at all this morning, but I'm getting more nervous now. I've got friends who say it's reasonable to expect one to two hundred dollars per date. So we'll see. I've decided I'm not going to drink alcohol on these dates. To me, this is work and I want to stay in control. How are you? Pretty good, too. Good, thanks. You're actually the first person I've met, oh, so I'm a little nervous, to be totally honest. How did your book say? Um, I have tons of friends who do it. I have, I know so many people who are interested in it, and but they're younger. Well, yeah, they're very young. The girls on there are like 19 and 20. Yeah. I'm like, I'm old on there. Yeah, no, but I mean, <laughs> I'm surprised. The girls are very young that time. Mm -hmm. I think he wanted someone who was like 19. But he was telling me about nicking. Nagging is when guys put girls down in order to knock their confidence so they can hit on them. 
all that stuff works, yeah. I'll give you an example. In New York, there's this girl that was uh, sitting down, I mean, she was like uh, either 15 or 10. I go, let's go talk to her. Mm-hmm. So I go there, I sit next to her, and then I'm like, oh, what do you do for a living, you know? She was on my model. I go, oh, really? She spent literally two hours coming back seeking validation. She didn't think I thought she was a real model. Mm-hmm. Okay? She gave me her number. The point is she was in Max's stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are very insecure. Very impressive, dude. I don't know. I didn't know how to be like, so, am I getting paid for this? It would have felt like asking my actual dad for money, you know? <laughs> Get him 20 bucks. Okay, have a good night. It was a total bust. I didn't make anything. And it didn't get better. I'm not sure what we're doing wrong, but it ended up going on like this for weeks. <laughs> How was your date? <laughs> oh, it was really long. <laughs> oh. Did you get paid? No. Oh. I got half a bottle of wine, I got a cheese plate, and a free ride on the TTC, because <laughs> they let me on with his Metro Pass. La ti da. <laughs> a good one hour thing. And then people he knew came in and I was like, I should be getting paid for this right now. I'm not doing this for charity. Did you talk about money now? No. I've like spoken to a lot of people and then like three hours before we're supposed to meet, they'll be like, ooh, I'm running late. Can you just come to my hotel room? Date after date, it felt like the three of us were leaving empty-handed and a little more jaded. Like the more dates I go on with more guys, the more they have like clear wants and desires, you know? You mean sex? <laughs> I'm just kissing. There's one guy on there who was like, I just want to make out. I'll give you $300 if you make out with me. Like, do you have anything you feel uncomfortable with versus anything you feel comfortable with? I mean, anything is up for negotiation, I suppose, as long as we discuss it ahead of time. It's just, yeah, something, I was just saying, something I couldn't do, so I just... Like, and some of them, they want emotional intimacy with sex. They want to feel like they have a girlfriend, you know? Mm hmm. That just sounds tricky. Tricky for me? Or tricky for us? Probably both. <laughs> I don't think I would be so fond of that. So fond of what? You sleeping with the guy? Mm hmm. I want our relationship to be the relationship. <laughs> mm hmm. Yep. That's fair. Yeah. I can do that. I love Hannah because we're a team. She's very supportive, and I'm very supportive of her. And we just have fun together. It's always a good time when we're together. She's uh, my best friend, and I really care about her. It was good to talk about boundaries with Jocelyn. Um, and I'm gonna just keep sex off the table. And he's like, oh, I thought oh. that like our connection transcended. Oh. Oh. You've done it, yeah. I felt like all like the weirdest like angry ones. It's like, I don't wanna be your friend. <laughs> you come over, you do your thing, and I pay. And I was like, this is perfect. For There's sure. no point in beating around the bush about what this arrangement is. It's money for your time. Yeah. 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 Caroline's phone was blowing up. I had to take a nap today because I got so exhausted. <laughs> what? Yeah, like a part-time job. <laughs> it was like a full-time job, except I haven't worked a full-time job in a while. <laughs> so has anyone actually asked you out yet? Yeah. Wait, I mean, like, one which second. one? Who? Uh, this is the stock trader guy, but you know, he's like steadily creeping me out more and more. How do you know that? <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I need to approve every guy you go on a date with. Well, you don't. <laughs> Is this the same guy who is like, I want something sexual, and then you were like, get off, and he kept messaging you? Yeah. So why are you going to meet with him? I don't understand. 
Well, like, I'm not going into it being like, oh, obviously this is all innocent, but I don't see why I shouldn't go and just, like, take the money. He's like, we'll get to that eventually. Like, why wouldn't I go for, like, two meetings, take the money? Yeah, but you're the one who said that he got creepy. Like, why bother going on a date with a creepy guy no matter what? I'm smart enough to navigate this properly and to be like, okay, this is okay, this is not okay. Caroline, if you're smart enough, then you don't go on the date in the first place. Then you say no online where that's a safe place. They don't know what you look like. They don't know where you hang out. And that's where you say no. You don't say no on your date. I understand where you're coming from, but it's just taking their money. Caroline, this isn't a big decision. This is an easy decision. You right, and no. I decided I'm gonna go. You don't make my decisions. That's just not how this works. End of story. I am more nervous, I think, for my sisters. Where I think I'm probably gonna be too quick to say no, I'm worried they're gonna be too quick to say yes. I'm meeting my friend Sandy, a professional sugar baby, because I still can't figure out how to turn my dates into a financial transaction. She's got four sugar daddies and she gets thousands of dollars a month in allowances and gifts from them. She doesn't waste time on anyone who doesn't give her money. I've been talking to this new guy who has a thing for tattoos uh -huh. and he's like, why don't I invest the money into tattoos? How many times have you gone out with him? Just once, I just met him on Sunday, but we had been speaking for at least two weeks. Now I get 500 on Friday for a tattoo session, right? So who are you going out with today? I am going out with a nice guy. I got that dress that I had shown you for my birthday. Did he buy the dress for you? Oh, of course. I'm <laughs> buying that. Yeah, of course he did. With Sandy, people pay her just to chat with them. Like, people pay her just for her attention. And that's so cool. Like, how do I get someone to pay me for my attention, you know? My attention's valuable, too. <laughs> okay, let me see this profile. I mean, it doesn't really show what you look like. Like, mm -hmm. you see more of the cat than you do your own face, you know? I don't know, my profile, like my main one, it's always a clear, up-close shot. It's browsing. You have to remember, you're in a list with hundreds of other girls. That one photo and that 30 seconds is what they're going to judge you on. How do you get there? How do you get to the point where you end up with regular income, with these allowances? Mm -hmm. So it's not even one man, per se, that is giving that steady income. It's that support network of men that are giving that. It does happen, it does, but it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. I was lucky. The first man that I met, I was getting my rent paid. That doesn't happen with everybody. First you know? man, first man, first, first man, date. first date, yeah. Damn. And I still talk to him. It takes time and effort, yeah. It's building the friendship so they don't feel like you're just coming to them for the money. Yeah. They like to be the hero in that sense, you know? <laughs> right. I need my heroes. I don't know. It definitely, it hasn't put me off. It made me want to try harder. Like, it's giving me hope. I'm getting better at weaning them out. I'm trying to find people who are a bit more open-minded and who seem to be a bit more interested in the fun side of things instead of just the ego-stroking side of things. I think we're going out with the same guy tonight. <laughs> I absolutely do. This one. Oh my God. He just texted me the same thing too. <laughs> no, really? No. Well, I'll let you know if he wastes my time. <laughs> I'm so happy you're going first. So what brings you to this site? So I was married for the past year and got separated for kids. And arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, back in India. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to go back into looking for something serious. Plus, in the whole process, uh, I found out a lot about myself in India that's not the way I want to live my life anymore. So I can change a lot of things around me and in me.
I really liked him. I thought he was really nice. I had fun. He paid me. <laughs> this feels like such a success. I didn't even check if it's... He paid me more than he said he would pay me. He paid me 130 bucks. Five dollars more than he said he was gonna pay. It didn't feel like work. He gave me a peck on the lips at the end of the night. And it was a friendly peck, you know? There's no pressure with him to make it romantic. You got groceries. You bought me groceries, yes. My God. I know, but like... So you liked him? He well, thought he was nice? as a person. I know. Which is kind of cool too, you know? I got 150. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I feel like it's like blood money. I feel really weird taking it. I feel like I'm exploiting somebody, but at the same time, I do. It was enjoyable. So it's just conflict right now. It's odd because we're doing it, or it's odd in general? What you guys are doing is just about the antithesis of what has been modeled to you, you know? Like, me and your dad have a really good relationship. We got married really, really young, but I married him because I knew I would be happy with him, and guess what? I'm, I'm right. I, I just think, okay, what's, what's changed in the last generation? that this is their idea of dating, that somebody pays them to go on a date with them. Escort service. So needless to say, you don't like that we're doing this? I don't like it at all. Because there's enormous rewards to being in a committed relationship. There's enormous rewards. As opposed to based on money. My mom has a point, but she's a baby boomer who's uncomfortable with sugar dating and sex work. If a woman can make money at it without compromising her boundaries, I have no problem with it. I really like this job. Mm -hmm. It's actually really, it's a really good job. And it affords me a lot of freedom. The one thing I'm really getting exhausted with is the in-between time. The texting, the calling. I can't handle that. Is that why you never went down the sugar daddy route? Yeah, I never even considered it. Mm -hmm. I don't like to beat around the bush. I like to get right to the point. Mm -hmm. Whereas what you're doing requires the extra energy. There's a lot of time that you invest with them that isn't compensated. Mm -hmm. You are not obligated to them. You have your own life. You have your own partner. And I'm sure your partner's pretty annoyed at this point with the amount of attention you need to give other people. How did you keep your relationship going? Well, I, I was escorting. It's... I'm with the client for an hour. The boundaries are very clear. You have to have your eye on the money and on the business. And it's important for you to see it as a job. Andrea is able to get what she wants on her own terms. I need to stop wasting time on daddies who don't pay me. So I'm going to the heart of the sugar daddy scene. And it means bigger money. In Toronto, the scene is really discreet. Whereas in New York, it's big, and the men are throwing money around at big parties, and everyone's popping champagne. My first stop in New York is with Alan Action, an event planner who owns one of the top sugar dating sites in the U.S. This evening, I'm his date for one of his elite sugar dating parties. Right, How do we get in? Watch this. You know everybody? I know everybody here, and these people love me, and it's all good. Oh, look, other beautiful women here. Now we're talking. We don't wait on lines. Sub G, nice to see you, man. It's all you. We're going to a private area, guys. You gotta see this, it's sick. This is what New York's all about. Rooftop entrance, baby, let's roll. You're shaking hands with the Empire State Building. Are you guys ready? Because it's coming up. It's outrageous! <laughs> Talk to me, New York! I do my events, I introduce people from the sugar world and the real world. And you know something? The real dating world and the sugar world is really the same thing. It's empowered men, luxe men, luxury style men, men that have power, that have influence, but do like to be with beautiful, younger women that can make them feel good. 
This is your friend over here? Yes. Come over here, girl. Let's make a nice, juicy, delicious lady. Let's see, I bring women that are very pretty, okay. very good looking, empowered, educated girls to meet men the same age, older. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. That's the mantra, and that's why the parties work, and that's why I do the parties. Um, relationship parties, what well, those entail? Business meeting pleasure. That's exactly what it is. Okay. It's about empowerment. empowerment. What you want from a relationship. Now, here's a question. Do you want to go out of the busted up, broke ass, bankrupt dude? Hell no. See, in unison, like they're singing. Here's my question to you. If you were going out with a man, he had a lot of money, and he used the money by saying, listen, I know you have a lot of school debt, honey. I'm gonna take care of that for you. And now I have opened the door to our chemistry to be developed. What do you think of that? That's a lovely idea, but I'm also sounds like prostitution. Very interesting. How can it be prostitution? He's assisting you from the goodness of his heart. He's not expecting sex. He's expecting you to entertain his advances. I feel like it's at the end of the night, Alan did what he does best, and he arranged a date for me and a New York sugar daddy he thought I'd like, named David. David called me the next morning and he asked me out. He said he likes out of towners and he wants to meet and play tour guide. It was pretty fun. And he was, he was cuter than I expected and younger than I expected. I thought for sure he was going to be shorter, fatter, balder, older. <laughs> but he wasn't any of that. I get very peachy wise. Like, you know, apple pie and the fly. <laughs> Seriously. I get from Georgia or something. It's a freckle. It's a freckle. I'm blonde, freckle. <laughs> He's totally flirting with me. But my boundaries were fine. Like, I didn't feel like he crossed any boundaries or tried to, or was trying to get something out of me. But he definitely is a man with goals. He knows what he wants. David is the kind of sugar daddy I've been looking for. At the end of our date, he handed me $400 cash, and he says he wants to do it again. I could get used to this. First hand. So I show up very late and I'm at the steakhouse and these hostesses immediately had me feeling really self-conscious uh -huh. <laughs> because I got there and they're like, what's your name? And I was like, Caroline. And they're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, bring me over to this man in his 40s. And I was like, wow, thanks. <laughs> He's being super normal. It was fine. I ate. A lot of food. I ordered dessert because I was like, fit your pay. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm like, this man is making sex eyes at me. <laughs> I'm like, what? I was like, I don't know what to do. What did he look like? Um, I don't know. Like, he actually did remind us, remind me of our dad to a certain extent. <laughs> and it was so disconcerting. Like, the moment he started, like, touching my hand, I was like, no, please don't. I need to leave right now. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> Caroline, did you get paid? No. This one guy I've been talking to, he like needs to message me every single day, all the time. I haven't even like gotten any money from this guy either. Isn't that the point? And I'm holding out for cash. But how much time have you put into this now? Probably like 50 text messages a day for the past three weeks. That's crazy. Yeah. Seems like he's taking advantage of that. Sometimes we'll be together and she'll be texting someone and that can be kind of shitty. 
um, especially if she is working really hard at the office and then in her off time, she's texting other guys and whatever, so that can be kind of annoying when she's always on her phone and I feel like I don't have her total attention. So you went on a date last night? That's it, I ended it. You ended it? Yeah. With Sam? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, he's really nice. He's like the nicest guy. I know, but that's like it. It's like, no, I don't want to take advantage of you and I want you to find what you're looking for in this situation and I don't want to waste your time. Although like, it was pleasant. And I see how this kind of arrangement can genuinely work for somebody. I wonder if he's gonna offer me a gift. I'm going on a date tomorrow. With him? Yeah. Are you into it? Um, I, I'm, I'm into him, he's nice, like. But he wants, like, a relationship from you. I just feel like he's, like, finally what I've been looking for, you know, a nice, guy who I don't cringe hanging out with him. I enjoy hanging out with him. I enjoy spending time with him. But I think you guys still want different things. Like he has, he was pretty clear with me what he wants. So, so you're kind of just like leading him on now. He's really nice and you enjoy his company. So why are you going to keep taking it's money from him? It's literally the point, Amelia. Him? It's literally the point. We're just two really different people. I don't live in your world, you don't live in my world. And it's fun. I'm, I'm settled. I can show you the world that you want to see, no problem. Sam is nice, but he's not naive. There's a reason he's on these sites looking for arrangements over relationships. And as long as I'm not compromising myself, I'm happy to keep seeing him. I went out with a guy and I was very clear. I said several times that I wasn't looking for anything physical, but he was just looking for someone to sleep with him. There are things that this could help a lot with, but I'm not getting anything worthwhile out of it. I've been back at school for a week now and my computer got stolen. I have to replace it. I can't afford to replace it. Um, I'm not working. I don't have, you know, a functional sugar relationship right now. I'm gonna go back to Toronto for next semester. I just got a panicked call from Amalia. She's super upset. Our dad got really mad at her. What happened? Tell me. That sucks. I mean, it's been like the whole time. I feel like I've had to answer the most questions and trying to justify it or defend it, but. So you were had dinner and then like, I don't understand what happened. I felt a bit attacked. They were coming down on me. Why? It's like I'm better than a lot of this. Or <laughs> we are. And that I should be focusing my life and my energies into other things. I don't know. I just feel like I don't want to be involved in anymore. And like, it's a bad idea. I keep going back to grade six religion lesson 
of secular versus sacred, and that's kind of a conflict in this household. You know, having grown up with religion, and I feel like I do live a very secular lifestyle. <laughs> Aside from like the fundamentals of like Catholicism, it's just so patriarchal. I can't get behind it. I can't. I, I can't be expected to be a woman in an institution that will never give me power, whether I want it or not. The fact that I don't have the option drives me mental. Yeah, the way I feel, like I'm my own person, I'm independent, but I also love my family and I'm not gonna like drive a wedge into that relationship. sugar daddy. Everybody's looking for a sugar baby. Meeting David, I feel like I struck gold. I feel like this is everything I've been looking for. I've been having a little bit of a hard time with the, I don't want to say morals of it all because I don't morals. think it's a moral yeah. issue or anything, but you know, am I taking advantage of someone by taking their money and am I being taken advantage of? Yeah, that's actually, you know, a very good question, right? Uh, I mean, let me ask you this. The money would be very helpful to you, though, right? Because you said in the documentary money business, so people don't drive Rolls Royces. <laughs> no, we don't. You're lucky if you drive. <laughs> bicycle. A bicycle. I do. I, a I have a right. bicycle. That's how I get around town. It's my style. What do you think of this one? I really like the color. Right? Yeah, I do. Color and the size. It's just perfect for me. It's perfect. Perfect. What about this? Would you buy this for me? Next time you're here, definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Sweet, huh? <laughs> Are you a large earring person or a small earring person? I'm a large earring person. What do you think? <laughs> perfect. Yeah? Yeah. So you like big earrings. So yeah. I do. I do. You should get these for me and you should get yourself a pair of socks. How's it going? Good, Pretty how are good. you? Good. good. Can I get these? You guys all set? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to have to catch my flight soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, it was a pleasure to see you again, and you should come back a little soon. How often would you invite me back? Well, at least once a month. Once a month? But like I said, I cover all expenses. So thinking about it, you don't have to tell me now. Thanks, yeah. text, email, whatever. You know, I'm no pressure. I'm gonna think of that end. All right, so this is it. You take over yourself. Thank you. You good? <laughs> Do you know Canadians? It's a nice. I had chemistry with David. Yeah. I think we. I think we liked each other's company. I think that's the only reason he offered me an allowance in trips to New York. And I don't want that connection to, I don't want it to piss Jocelyn off. I already feel broken up about it. I feel like I don't know what I want anymore. I'm back in Toronto and everybody speaks English, <laughs> the language that I speak. I can work in service again. I'm also not paying rent, so I'm not so like strapped for cash. I don't know, right now I would rather work for my money than, than have it handed to me for over dinner. Ugh, this might have improved my work ethic. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I feel like I started this hoping that a sugar daddy would be a shortcut to where I wanted to get. And I feel like things just kind of lined up in my life, whereas having a sugar daddy just was not relevant to anything that I wanted or anything that was going on in my life. Yeah, I moved out. We're still in the transitioning phase, trying to move in. I feel really good. It's been like not even a rough adjustment. Focusing a lot more on my closer relationships and the people in my life. I got what I wanted, I was ready for it.
David and I have been texting quite a bit, but not too much. He doesn't require that much attention, which is pretty nice. Uh, he touches in like every two days or so. And he definitely really wants me to come to New York. Hi, Mally. Making me lunch? Hmm? Making me lunch? With the food I don't have? No. I brought, I brought an avocado and tomatoes. Okay. Who are you texting? David. David. New York David. Sugar Daddy David? Yeah. Okay. And what's he saying? I think he's going to New York next weekend. And did you talk to Jocelyn about it? Yeah, I mean... Like, it's obviously not ideal for her. Yeah. Jocelyn doesn't want you to go. I say you're just gonna go anyways. Yeah, and I mean, she's not like outrightly like, no, you can't do this. I know, but she's not gonna say anything. She wants to give you freedom. Me and Caroline have been talking about it. It's like, you're not making time for us. You're like bailing on us. All you talk about is this. And if you're pushing Jocelyn away, this is not. So what do I do? I just stop just because? Is it getting you ahead? Is it putting you in the direction you want to go? Is it worth the money? If in two years time, oh, you've saved the money you want, but look at that, no Jocelyn. Like me and Caroline barely hang out with you. This is gonna distance you more from mom and dad. Jocelyn seems a little edgy, not comfortable with this. So if I can see that, you should be able to see that. I don't understand why you're, I don't know. You've been pretty shitty. Just because you're not doing it anymore, I'm suddenly in the wrong here. I don't think you're in the wrong because you're sugar dating. I think you're in the wrong because you're sugar dating at the expense of a lot of your other relationships. That's for me to decide and not you. Okay, well, when things go wrong for you later, then don't expect me to be around. Excuse me? Hmm. Don't expect you to be around don't for Don't expect me to be around and, like, pick up the pieces with you. It's just funny that, like, you're my older sister and I always expected you're the one to be around for me, but you really haven't lately. I'm done. Malia. Malia. I don't want to make my family mad at me. I feel like I'm in a weird moral gray area and I've been in it for months now and now I can't, now everything is falling into this moral gray area. You know, now my family's in it, my relationship's in it, my boundaries are in it. I keep going and I keep playing along because I keep getting things out of it. It feels like I am playing this game and I want to win and get something bigger. First new message. Hi Hannah, this is David. I booked a ticket to New York for you this weekend. I was thinking we could visit some art galleries, which we didn't get an opportunity to visit last time. It would be great to see you again, and I'd love for you to make it. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye. I'm going to go because it's everything I've been working towards. I've been trying to find a sugar daddy for almost a year, and this guy is perfect. It would mean I don't have to work two jobs. It would mean I can spend my free time the way I want to spend it, not working for more money. It's an entire salary. Hey, this is Jocelyn. Leave me a message and I'll get back. I don't see how the relationship wouldn't extend beyond that weekend. 72 hours of one-on-one -on -one time with the sugar daddy and then communicating with him whenever he wants. That does not seem worthwhile to me, personally. I, I don't think that that's nearly enough. I think that she's worth more than that. Sometimes I fantasize about putting everything and just yeah. doing whatever I want. <laughs> whatever I want. Whatever you please, whenever you please. Uh, you only live once, right? Yeah, it, it's true. So what would you consider reasonable then, including expenses? For well, like I said, 2000 2000 Yeah. 
Yeah. Is that too low for you or too high for you? That's not bad. <laughs> oh, thank you. For me, for me especially because it's American and I'm Canadian, so that's like. Oh, uh, uh, does that matter? What is it? Yeah, it's almost three thousand Canadian dollars. It is. <laughs> you could have lowballed uh, me, but. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, that's what I said. <laughs> you my bad. Can you want so it? You cut two thousand. Yeah. Yeah, Canadian. 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 Yeah. 2,000 American, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. What a trade. <laughs> it's a great trade for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. So then, you know, she keeps looking over. She's getting into Yeah, that's all right. Let me see. Okay, it looks like our, our ride is here. Would you like to come over for a drink? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's Alexis. see that. Okay. Yeah. Great, let's see that. Okay, yeah. It's been a while. Being here, I feel less grounded than I do in Toronto, and that can be really fun. But it's dangerous to get swept up with someone like David. This is a legit sugar daddy. This is real, you know? This big time New York sugar daddy with money and a budget. I just got back from David's house and we were having a good time um, and he told me I should stay and I really didn't want to feel obligated to sleep with him but it's hard not to because you know he, he has put so much money into just me being here that I want, I feel like I, I want to give him something or I, I want him to at least feel like it was worth it. But I freaked out and I left. It's gonna take a bit of work And if I'm gonna make money, if I'm gonna get the big payoffs, then I have to sleep with these men. And I wanted it to work for me, and I considered it. And that's what really scared me. Once I thought about having sex with David, the relationship becomes so much bigger, so much more energy, so much more effort, so much more of me. And I think that's what I can give, is me. It's all of me not for a little bit of money. from sugar dating is that nothing comes without a price. My family, my relationships, my community, they're everything to me. And without my circle, I'm lost. Sugar relationships can work. I know a lot of women who make it happen. And I thought it could work for me too. But my priorities are clear now. I've got to hold my people close.